Hello, in today's video we're going to continue our discussion of polarity, and so I'm going to start with this video from an old textbook of ours because I think it does a better job of showing things in motion better than I can do um, with PowerPoint. Molecules that have separated positive and negative centers are called polar molecules. This separation of charges is confirmed in an electric field. When the electric field is turned on, polar molecules orient their negative charge centers toward the positive plate and their positive ends toward the negative plate. And then of course I have to interrupt and I want to say that this um, alignment of molecules in an electric field is how all of your liquid crystal displays work for your phone and your computer and the projector and all these things. All right, let's continue. Consider the Lewis structures of sulfur dioxide and boron trifluoride. In both structures, there are three VSEPR pairs of electrons around the central atom, meaning that the electron pair arrangement about the central atoms is trigonal planar. The molecular geometry of boron trifluoride is trigonal planar, but because of the lone pair, the molecular geometry of sulfur dioxide is V-shaped. In boron trifluoride, there is a shift in electron density from boron to fluoride because the fluoride atom is more electronegative than the boron atom. And by shift in electron density, they mean that the boron-fluorine bond is polar. This shift in electron density is symbolized by placing a crossed arrow next to the bond to indicate the direction of the shift. To determine if the molecule is polar, i.e., is there a net dipole moment, we must sum together the individual bond moments. If we add together two of the bond moments in boron trifluoride, the resultant moment is equal and opposite to the upper bond moment. These two moments cancel, and the molecule is nonpolar. The dipole moment is zero. In sulfur dioxide, there is a shift in electron density from sulfur to oxygen because the oxygen atom is more electronegative than the sulfur atom. The two bond moments do not cancel each other. They sum together to give a resultant or net dipole moment with the positive end of the dipole near sulfur and the negative end of the dipole pointing towards the oxygen atom. Sulfur dioxide is polar with a dipole moment of 1.63 Debye units. And so this matches what we talked about previously, how the electronic geometry for both of these is the same because they both have three electron groups around the central atom, but for the sulfur dioxide, its molecular geometry will be different because of that lone pair. All right, let's continue. Consider the Lewis structures of CH4, methane, and NH3, ammonia. In both structures, there are four VSEPR pairs of electrons around the central atom, meaning the electron pair arrangement about the central atoms is tetrahedral. The molecular geometry of methane is tetrahedral, but because of the lone pair, the molecular geometry of ammonia is trigonal pyramidal. In methane, there is a slight shift in electron density from hydrogen to carbon because carbon is more electronegative than hydrogen. To determine the polarity of the molecule, we must sum together the individual bond moments. Let's rotate the molecule so that we can better see how the bond moments add together. Adding together the top two bond moments and the bottom two bond moments gives two resultant moments that are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. These two moments cancel and the molecule is nonpolar. The dipole moment is zero. So this one's really hard to see. A lot of people look at the tetrahedral shape and say, that must be polar. But it turns out it's nonpolar. And so please remind me in class and I'll show you on some molecular models in person some, you know, thoughts as to why this is. Ultimately, as long as you remember that tetrahedral, if all four of the atoms around the central atom are the same, then it's nonpolar. If you just remember that, then you're okay. All right, let's look at the ammonia. In ammonia, there's a shift in electron density from hydrogen to nitrogen because nitrogen is more electronegative than hydrogen. The three bond moments do not cancel each other. They sum together to give a resultant or net dipole moment with the positive end of the dipole near the hydrogen atoms and the negative end of the dipole near the nitrogen atom. Ammonia is polar with a dipole moment of 1.46 to buy units. And you don't need to know how to calculate the degree, the amount of the dipole moment, this 1.46 to buy units. Um, it's a number you can look up if you need it. It relates to the degree of polarity of the molecule, but it's not something we need to calculate now. 
Consider the Lewis structures of phosphorus pentafluoride and sulfur tetrafluoride. In both structures, there are five VSE PR pairs of electrons around the central atom, meaning that the electron pair arrangement about the central atoms is trigonal bipyramidal. The molecular geometry of phosphorus pentafluoride is trigonal bipyramidal, but because of the lone pair, the molecular geometry of sulfur tetrafluoride is a distorted tetrahedron, or seesaw. Two things. One, we tend to use seesaw in our class. Two, again, this is another example of the electronic geometry for both of these is the same because you're counting these electron groups, or as the video calls them, the SEPR pairs. But when you look at the molecular geometry, the lone pair starts to matter, and it, the, the video makes the lone pair go away, but it's up here, right? So this lone pair affects the molecular geometry, which you name from just the atoms. In phosphorus pentafluoride, there's a shift in electron density from phosphorus to fluoride because fluoride is more electronegative than phosphorus. To determine the polarity, we must sum together the individual bond moments. The bond moment pointing up is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction to the bond moment pointing down. These bond moments cancel. If we sum together two of the bond moments in the trigonal plane, the resultant moment is equal and opposite to the third bond moment in the trigonal plane. These two moments cancel, and the molecule is nonpolar. The dipole moment is zero. In sulfur tetrafluoride, there is a shift in electron density from sulfur to fluoride because fluoride is more electronegative. As in phosphorus pentafluoride, the bond moment pointing up is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction to the bond moment pointing down. These bond moments cancel. The two bond moments in the trigonal plane do not cancel each other. They sum together to give a resultant or net dipole moment with the positive end of the dipole near sulfur and the negative end of the dipole pointing towards the fluoride atoms. Sulfur tetrafluoride is polar with a dipole moment of 0 0.63 to buy units. Consider the Lewis structures of sulfur hexafluoride and xenon tetrafluoride. In both structures, there are six VSEPR pairs of electrons around the central atom, meaning that the electron pair arrangement about the central atoms is octahedral. The molecular geometry of sulfur hexafluoride is octahedral, but due to the lone pairs on xenon, the molecular geometry of xenon tetrafluoride is square planar. In sulfur hexafluoride, there is a shift in electron density from sulfur to fluoride because fluoride is more electronegative. To determine the polarity, we must sum together the individual bond moments. The bond moment pointing up is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction to the bond moment pointing down. These bond moments cancel. In the square plane, the bond moments on opposite sides of the molecule are equal in magnitude and also cancel. All bond moments cancel and the molecule is nonpolar. The dipole moment is zero. In xenon tetrafluoride, there's a shift in electron density from xenon to fluoride because fluoride is more electronegative. And again, the video didn't draw it, but don't forget that there's a lone pair on each side of the xenon here. Two lone pairs on the xenon, and that's what makes this the square planar geometry. In the square plane, the bond moments on opposite sides of the molecule are equal in magnitude and therefore cancel with each other. All bond moments in the molecule cancel, and the molecule is nonpolar. The dipole moment is zero. Okay, hopefully this video was helpful.